I'm going to show you, I hope, or persuade you, I hope, in the next 10, 15 minutes, that um, the most bland, boring scene can actually be a really fascinating sketch. And we, you know, don't need to judge a book by cover, as, as we say. What we can do, actually, is we can look at a scene and think about it in a different way. So by looking at a, a boring scene, um, but then examining it in terms of shapes, examining it in terms of, ooh, how can we apply different colours? Examining it in terms of what do we feel about this scene? How can we have fun? Well, from there, we can end up with a really fun, interesting scene from something so boring. And uh, with that, I hope you'll enjoy it. Please do leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you might have done differently. Let me know what you thought of the reference photo. <laughs> Was it boring enough? Or should I have used something even worse? Um, I hope you enjoy and let's move on and do some boring but fun and interesting sketching. So what are we using in terms of equipment? Why well, are we using my fountain pen? It's got um, this ink, carbon ink in, uh, which is a waterproof ink. This is a Diamond 580 by Twisby um, and it's got a uh, fine nib in it. We've also got a Moleskine uh, landscape watercolour sketchbook. We've got my normal set of watercolours, which are, as ever, all listed up on urbansketch.co.uk if you check the supplies tab. And I'm using a, um, a Jackson's Raven size 2 uh, sort of mop, quill mop brush. So it carries lots of water, but also picks up lots of pigment and a really good way of having a bit of fun. Over here, giant pot of water. You can see I've been sketching this morning. It's not the cleanest water, but that's okay. When we are out and about, which I'm not today, no excuses for dirty water, but when I'm out and about, um, you know, you might have done two or three sketches already. So, of course, you're not going to be able to just necessarily have perfectly clean water. So, with that, what are we doing? What is our first step? Um, and there's no prizes for guessing this one if you've seen my channel before. It's shapes. So we're going to find the shapes in this image. And I think, well, I hope that you'll agree as we find the shapes, actually, this is quite interesting because there's lots of interesting shapes going on. It's easy to focus on this here. So if we pop in our, our triangle and our square underneath. It's easy to focus on that being boring. Uh, but actually, it's not just that shape going on, is it? That's what feels like it's dominating us, dominating our vision. But around, there's everything else. There's all these different shapes, the interactions, the relationships, which for me actually make this scene with potential. So uh, what else can we find? Well, in front, we've got a rectangle. And I'm just going to start now doing this as a continuous line and as another way of creating interest, making it more fascinating. In front, we've got um, sort of, well, you can either call them shapes. I, I like to think of them as just spheres, circles, that kind of thing. But basically just loose shapes of this greenery. Then we can finish off the square to the right. We can move on and we've kind of got like a, of rhomboids, a couple of uh, more rectangles coming along. Um, coming in front we've got these cars and cars are sort of slightly confusing but they are still just shapes. So we draw a rectangle, a rectangle, circle, we draw this kind of elliptical triangle thing but it's still just a shape even though I can't describe it properly. Then we've got the next car in front. Again we just find that little front which is kind of like a circle Come and draw the side, the, the light, then we've got the next circle of a wheel, then we've got the rectangle of the windshield, and before you know it, there's a couple of cars. Behind them, more shapes. So we've got a little rectangle and a triangle. Behind that, we've got another rectangle with a triangle. And look, actually, this scene is starting to become moderately interesting, just because we have simplified it, we've taken the essence of it, and we've taken that essence, and that essence is shapes. That essence is interesting textures. And as we build them up, actually suddenly there's a lot of things to look at, a lot of just places to examine with our eye and to follow and move and flow around the image. So it doesn't matter that as a, as a scene, it's just a, a normal residential street. Actually, when we turn it into a piece of art, you know what? It becomes quite fascinating. We do the same here. We've got uh, just stacked up shapes going into the background, just rectangles coming towards us as well. And there's all these interactions of how things are moving towards us, how things are relating to one another, uh, that it just really, you know, it just starts to make 
something fun. Get this lovely lamp, well, telephone uh, post. In fact, not lamp post, telephone post up. And we can keep going back and finding all these shapes as they interact going backwards. And again, just mostly doing this as a continuous line drawing. People often ask why why bother with continuous line drawing? They think, what's the point? Not that they, they're sort of questioning it, they just don't understand and perfectly right. Why would you understand? Why would you make it harder? Well, actually, I say it makes it easier. It makes it, um, it injects interest in it, injects this character, which um, we don't have to think too hard to get. It just becomes interesting because everything is linking and related. We can find a couple of other little things going on, but also we can leave things unsaid. So let's just suggest these car, well, this car at least, uh, maybe another car just alongside. And there we go. And it's just really loose suggestions. We can just suggest that this little hedge exists with some little loops. And then we can bring in some of these wires coming off the pole. And there we go. That's our, our line work, at least our initial line work done. And now I feel this is quite interesting. It's got this flow. We're, we're moving in, exploring, coming across to this big blank feeling building. Um, but then it immediately comes down to more interest over here. Now, how can we move on from this? What's step two? Well, step two is, of course, some loose colours. So I've got a really big brush today. I'm actually going to add one bit of equipment. Because it's a big brush, the, the page can take a lot of water, so it might buckle. So if I just add a little um, sort of crocodile or a binder clip here, that will save me a little bit of stress as we sketch. And then I'm going to, today, let's just see what happens if we leave the sky. If we, we take this scene and we make it all about what's happening underneath, underneath all of these linked shapes. And what we'll notice, look, if we just pop water along, if we just go, you know, we're going to add water to every linked shape. Well, look, this whole scene is, is actually linked. Not just linked because we did continuous line drawing. No, actually, even if we just look at the reference, look, everything along here, it's linked. It's actually linked in our reference. It's actually linked in the scene. They're all relating to one another. So suddenly we have a way of applying colour in a way it's going to flow and again promote this interesting, slightly abstract version of our scene. So I'm going to start with Scarlet Lake, a bit of a warm colour into the, this building, which is definitely on the warmer, redder end of the spectrum, as is this car down here. So again, just touching that colour in. Notice I'm holding my book at an angle so that all the colours are floating down. Now to create that variation, I'm going to add another colour in there. I'm going to go with some Cronacolone Sienna. That should give us more of that red brick feeling. Instead of just a, a bright primary red, we've now got that kind of uh, more browny tinge going on. There is a bit of that same red coming into this wall, so I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to, going to then add just some sort of neutral colour. This is actually a bit of indigo I've been painting with earlier. It's a little bit neutral just to get that shadow, because there's a definite shadow there, isn't there? Now that shadow can continue down. Look at this lovely shadow coming out towards us. And again, just we can amp it up, a bit more indigo, just to really amp up the fact that this is all in shadow. And suddenly it's got this almost reflection going on. It's all joining itself together again in a different way. Going towards the back here, let's let's amp up this idea of the yellow in there. It's a bit of quinacridone gold, a bit of quinacridone sienna again, so that we're not being too varied, too different uh, between different objects. But also trying to make it sort of pull apart and be, be a different half of the scene. We've got shadow, we've got warm, we've got light and glowing. And what's missing? What's the major thing missing? Well, a little bit of that green, isn't it? We've got green grass in this edge. We've got greens here and here, all here, all here. And there we go. So that's our greens now touched in. And finally, a bit more of our neutral, our, our indigo. And that's just going to join up these rooftops. So we're pulling apart again the shadows, the greys, versus these brighter areas as well. I'm going to soften, let some of these colours run all the way down. Look at the sort of magic way that they just flow and interact and come down the page towards us. And we can then get to the point where we decide, you know, do we want to add something to the sky or do we want to leave it 
blank. I think for now I'm still going to leave it blank. I'm going to do a couple more touches in and around our scene. So again, just focusing on the colours we've already used. Just getting a bit bolder colour. And with the page no longer tilted, more of the colour will stay where I put it. So more of this quinacridone gold and quinacridone sienna is going to stay up here. More of these greens will stay where they are. They'll, they'll float outwards instead of just flowing quickly down. Perhaps you want to get this red back in this car down here. Just nice and bold bit of red. And then perhaps we want, you know, we've lost a lot of this, this shadow that we, we put some effort into getting. So a bit more indigo. And that's coming out as a sort of purpley colour because um, because of that red still on my brush. But that's not a problem for me. At least it might be something you find an issue with. So be careful with your brushes if you do. But for me, I actually quite like the... Uh, the, the blending and merging of things. There's a bit of shadow coming in here, so we can get that. And maybe just a few taps. Maybe this is where we start getting just something going on in the sky. Just a little something, a suggestion, a leak of, of colour. And with that very simple sketch, we're going to let it dry. So that's step two done. We've gone from shapes and finding that actually this very, very boring scene is interesting because of the shapes, to enhancing those shapes with some very loose colour. And we'll see what happens. And the final step will, of course, be basically anything goes. Adding some finishing touches using our pen, using our, our watercolours, just seeing how we can lift this scene even more again. So hello everyone, we're back. And this is step three. You can see almost, but not entirely dry, because there's so much water down here, um, but pretty much dry. And what can we do to enhance this, take this to the next level? Well, I'm going to say at the moment I feel like the ink stuff is okay so I'm actually just going to focus a little bit more on the watercolours and just see if we can with just a, a few touches but still using just one big brush let's see if we can just amp it up take it to that next level to do that I'm just going to try and lift some of these warm areas what might be helpful here when you've got a big brush especially a mop it's designed to carry loads of water but just by touching the belly of the brush we can actually remove a lot of that water and suddenly we can get these actually very controlled little areas, do you see? So instead of this big patch, before I dried it, just by drying it off, taking some of that water out, suddenly we can actually control what we're doing much better. And with that control, it means we can be more focused in our colours and we can add in some real bold touches rather than just relying on the looseness and the colours to you know, do what they want to do. We could actually decide today we're going to control them just a little bit more. So let's just take this principle around a little bit. We can do it with the dark colours as well. And just really just pick out some of these shapes which we want really to darken and and just show their face a lot more. Just come in and picking out things like these these walls. And I don't want it to be really tight. So having done that, just come in, dry my brush off and just soften some of these edges. So just making it so actually, although I've controlled it, it's still going to loosen and blend and, and feel fluid. And then continue just doing these same little ideas as we go back into the distance, just lifting some of these colours, just changing the wash. So I've got a little bit more cracked in sienna, a little bit more cracked in gold, depending on where I am, a little bit more even scarlet lake, you know, just depending on where we're focusing, just keeping that lovely variation going. A bit more of the indigo to create these deeper shadows. And by doing that, things are just they're coming forward. Bolder colours, much like bold lines, bolder, stronger colours come forward as well. Similarly, we can get in these kind of idea of the shadow just on this uh, curb line if we want, just a little bit more. And we can keep it nice and soft just by softening out some of those edges. And let's find this car again. We've done this car so many times because it was so loose. We kept losing a lot of that deep red. Um, there's a little red car here as well, so we can find that one as well. And I love adding nice bold yellow to the headlights. And I know we haven't used the yellow so far in this image, but I think because we've used colours close to it, actually a little touch of yellow won't be so bad. It won't take too much away. And why is that important? Because actually normally I say, you know, if, you, if you're using a colour in one place, try and use it in more than one, because otherwise it just draws the eyes. So with that in mind, we've got the yellow here and here and here, and we could just literally just do some, some splashes 
And that might be all we need, just to stop the eye being too drawn, just to our little touches of yellow. And then a little bit of, oh, I've got the wrong green there. Going back to my cascade green. Cascade green here. Again, just dry off the brush, control that color. And we can just bring these bushes forward. Do you see how at the moment the bushes, so they felt like they were behind the house almost, even though they're obviously in front, just because they were less punchy, less saturated. And these ones we want to feel further back, so we leave them like that. This here, these kind of bushes want to come forward, so we add that punch again. And we can come in with a bit more indigo into this shadowy area. And here, and maybe even more into this wall. And there, so anything else to do, maybe a little touch of green splash as well, just gives this sky a little bit of something without without doing anything at the same time and i'm actually going to say look that's my sketch done now it's not the most amazing sketch in the world by any means but what we've taken is this blank slate this totally blank wall and we've injected a bit of fun and color and life into it we found what is interesting about the scene and for me i really enjoyed this sketch actually and it it's a it's a fun sketch it's not got a, a giant focal point but it's got lots of different bits to, to look around, to play with, to be interested in. And not every sketch has to be the perfect sketch of the perfect scene. Um, and often we're not in the perfect place to do that anyway. So instead of focusing on trying to make things perfect, just pick whatever is in front of you, sketch it and see what happens. And you might find yourself just gradually learning, you know, the kind of things that you can make amazing, the kind of unexpected bits of joy you can have from exploring scenes which just don't really seem like likely candidates. So that's what I hope you've got from this sketch. You might also have just got that I'm a bit mad and I like doing sketches of rubbish scenes. So either way, uh, you've learned something, <laughs> fingers crossed. And with that, you know, uh, thank you for joining in. Do like, comment, subscribe and leave a comment below about what you think. You know, does this inspire you to sketch boring scenes, make them interesting? Or do you just think this is a waste of time? Lovely to hear your thoughts and all opinions always valid. So thank you very much and happy sketching. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again. So this sketch is really boring and, and that's okay. What we're going to do actually, no, that's rubbish. That's rubbish. That's rubbish.